You're very welcome back to Red Business and Focus with Cork's local enterprise offices, where we're sharing Cork's success stories. This week, we have got Carol Feller of Stolen Stitches in the Spotlight. It's a company that began in 2008 with a unique hand-knit design that was sold digitally. Then in 2017, the business grew to include a new line of yarn. Carol, it's lovely to meet you. Thank you so much for coming in. Oh, it's lovely to be here. Thank you. I know absolutely nothing about knitting, so this is going to be <laughs> very much a journey of discovery for me. Like everybody, we're giving you 30 seconds at the very start just to try and encapsulate what the business does. Oh, very good. Should have brought knitting needles in with me. <laughs> um, well, my name is Carol Feller, as you already said, and I'm a hand knit designer and also a teacher. Um, my business is Stone Stitches, um, and I set up Stone Stitches to help knitters really to be able to expand their knitting knowledge. And so at Stolen Stitches, what we want to do is we want to help knitters find the pattern they want to knit and pair it with a luxury yarn. And then we will help you with our online knitting community and our learning hub so that you can put it all together and really come out with the finished product that you love. OK, very good. Nearly bang on 30 seconds. Thank you for that. Um, the trick here is, is to make knitting accessible, I would imagine, to show that it's not something that is high, highfalutin and convoluted that is beyond the reach of people. Um, how did you come up with this? I know you say you're a teacher, so has, it, has knitting always been part of who you are? Um, well, it, it, I'm actually not originally a teacher. I'm originally um, a structural engineer. Um, and there's a, there's a correlation. There, there, there act, yeah, yeah, I can see it. There actually is, because I spend, I, you know, it starts with a lot of number crunching and to make sure the pattern is easy to read and has got large range of sizes for everyone. And so the reason uh, it ended up kind of, the, the, the knitting came about after I sold a previous business because I was sitting at home starting to knit and then I very quickly started moving into design work from there. And so then the learning came next because as I was writing the patterns, I realized that I had to make sure the people who were getting at the other end were able to use them and had the full range of knowledge. So that's now, where the it thing came is, from. Showing people designs and coming up with designs is one thing. You decided to come up with the actual yarn itself. Now, I'm guessing that's infinitely more complicated than just coming up with a design that perhaps your granny might have done as well. I had a lot of help with that because it came about really by connections within, in, within the industry through starting as a designer. I began to know a lot of people in the yarn industry itself and through discussions then with them, we came up with yarns that worked really well with the kind of designs I like to do. Like initially in Peru, because I've got a distributor in um, the UK who does the first range of yarns, which was Nua. And then most recently, Donegal Yarns has started producing a yarn line called Blasta for me, which has been fantastic for all the Celtic designs. And it, uh, th th these are said same yarns here? Exactly, they? yes, one of each, yeah. Okay, how expensive is it to do that, to create your own yarn? Um, it's, there's a bit of an investment in actually getting the yarns initially because, you know, you start off usually with fairly limited colours. And then as we worked up over a couple of years, we began expanding the colour ranges a little bit. But I've had a lot of support from my distributors that really helped a lot financially along the way as well. And how do you connect with the people who buy yarn? Because I'm guessing that there's a huge market out there. They've probably got traditional roots that they get their stuff from. How have you managed to, to find the customer? It's well, it's. For me, I sell all online, but initially a lot of it came about by teaching on knitting tours and retreats in Ireland, uh, mainly North Americans, but a mix of Europeans as well. And so meeting them individually, and then when they went out, they wanted to be able to keep getting the Irish yarn. And more recently, I've got a studio in Tremor Road now, and so there's local knitters in Cork also coming in who want to expand their knitting knowledge, really, and to find a way to, to learn easily online. Um, One of the things that you did was you moved from being a sole trader uh, which a lot of companies start out as, uh, to, to become bigger and to have people working with you. How did you manage that transition? What help did you get? It was, well, that was where Leo actually came in for me. Is um, like We started last year with the accountant where we made the switch over, um, but at the same time, I also took on a couple of employees. And when you've been working for many years as a sole trader, you're used to doing everything yourself. And so figuring out how to be able to delegate and figure out what jobs do you need help with. So through Leo, I went, I've been doing some mentoring programs with him and he's just been helping me figure out what I need help with and what I should be holding on to doing myself. I mean, know? people always talk about businesses being a passion. Um, you have to do what you love because if you're, if you're doing something you don't enjoy, it, it's going to get very boring very quickly. As you've grown this business, 
Do you, do you still love knitting I as love much it. as you would have done <laughs> when love, you started? That's what I was doing while I was waiting to come into the studio. I was <laughs> sitting in the car and I was knitting. No, I love it. It's what I do every evening. It's it's my work, but it's also my downtime. It's like the second I pick up the needles, there's instant relaxation. It's it's kind of hard to describe. And how much of your own clothes do you knit? How much do you actually do yourself? Um, for winter, uh, most of them. Less so in summer, but like a lot of my jumpers and things. Like what I'm wearing now, I've knitted. Um, but most of what I would wear in winter would be handmade. And my, my last question is, in, in an era of throwaway fashion, where people are buying stuff that is coming from God knows where and made using God knows what, um, you, you must feel kind of unique that what you're wearing is the only type of its kind. It's great. It means you can make it so it fits you exactly. You can pick the luxury yarn that you want to use so that you don't have to have something that's an acrylic blend. And it's you know exactly the colour you want. So it means that it's yeah your perfect garment, basically. Carol, it's been lovely talking to you. Thank you so much for coming in. StolenStitches.com is the website. That's right, yeah, or in Tremor Road. <laughs> Join us next week where we'll be joined by Pat Murphy of CK53 Designs. Pat is a self-taught woodworker who's developed and honed his collection over the past number of years. His work really is beautiful. It's stylish and it's practical and it's a modern interpretation of traditional wooden items. We can't wait to hear his story. That's next time on Red Business in Focus with thanks to Cork's local enterprise offices.